Kirby Air Ride was one of my favorite games growing up, and we're finally getting a sequel on Switch 2. So to celebrate and as an excuse to make something, I decided that I'm going to try and replicate its movement system within Godot. I've been meaning to learn more about Godot, specifically in regards to 3D, and replicating its basic movement system seemed like a fun project. To help break this down, I divided its systems into a simple and fitting acronym, CART. So let's jump right in, starting with... First up, and most importantly, we need to get the grounded CART physics to work. So let's dive into what we needed to recreate from Kirby Air Ride. In the original game, movement is super simple to comprehend. Your cart is always accelerating forward and only ever stops when you decide to charge slash drift. So first up, I added a plane to symbolize the warp start, alongside a simple collision shape 3D node. The first main mechanic I worked on was getting the basic plane to move forward, and when pressing a button, you would slow down and charge up. Then, when releasing a charge, you'd boost quickly to provide that satisfying drift boost. This was quite easy to do, as I simply had some code check to see if you were charging up, and if so, a timer would increase as there's a max charging time, and once released, this code would run giving the player a boost depending on how long they were charged up for. Ultimately, this was super easy to do, and within a bit of time I already had the basics down for the cart's movement. Back to Kirby Air Ride, when charging up and holding a direction, you can see Kirby shift away from the middle of the screen. Then once you release that button, you're instantly back in the middle of the screen again, making the boost feel that much more impactful. This push-slash-pull feeling ultimately makes drifting feel fun, satisfying, and rewarding. So over in Godot, to replicate this, I implemented a couple of things. First off, I added another node for the camera to pivot around, which allowed me to program it so the camera shifts to either side when charging up, without losing focus of the main star. On top of this, in order to make the game feel a bit more satisfying, I implemented a FOV change when you charge up, which really starts to sell the feeling. All of these values I've also made sure to apply some good ol' lerping to, just to make sure that everything feels super smooth. Next up, if you take a look at the original game, depending on which direction you're holding, being forward, back, left, or right, while just accelerating, the cart model actually tilts very slightly. So, I worked on implementing that in Next. This was quite simple to do, as I was able to add some variables and make it so the cart visual tilted accordingly when doing so. Combining that with what I previously added, you can really start to see how polished the game was becoming, even with a slice of cheese as the placeholder cart. After this, I decided to add some very slight bobbing to the cart. The way this was implemented was basically checking to see if you were not charging, and if so, the cart's Y position would move on a very small sine wave, basically making it bob up and down without actually impacting any cart physics. So next up was something that I spent way too much time on being slope alignment. Slopes in any engine can be the absolute bane of many developers, and I spent a ton of time researching and testing different methods to get the cart to align to a slope. And ultimately, after about 50 trillion hours, this is basically what I ended up with. Essentially, I used a raycast where every frame it shot straight down from the cart to check to see if we're on the ground. And if we are grounded, we are able to get the ground slope direction, being the surface normal. Then, we basically rebuild the cart's rotation so it leans perfectly to match the angle of the ground. Finally, I decided to smoothly blend the visual rotation towards the ground angle, just to make sure it feels natural and not instant. The earlier versions of slope alignment were a lot more rough, leading to weird angles, flying off the ground, clipping, and stuttering. And after spending way too much time on it, I ended up with a pretty smooth way to have slopes work. So with all of that, the main cart movement was complete, so let's move right on to... Without air movement, this game would simply be Kirby Ride, which does not sound nearly as catchy and fun, so let's go over how air movement works. In the original game, when you go off a ramp into the air, you enter what is basically a gliding mode. Your speed is retained, and you're able to fly around wherever you want, with a time limit. The longer you spend in the air, the more gravity is applied. This is obviously dependent on the star you're riding, so in Godot, I made sure that everything was a parameter that could be modified easily. So, since we're already using a raycast for angling our cart to the ground, I was able to simply add a check to see if the ground ray isn't colliding, then we'd enter the gliding phase. So firstly, gravity is reduced initially when gliding to give off the feeling that you're floating. As time goes on, gravity ramps up, meaning the longer you're airborne, the faster you fall. 
On top of this, similar to the ground cart tilting, I made it so that while gliding, the cart tilts a lot more to really sell that airborne feeling. On top of this, in the original game, if you are gliding in the air and you press the charge button, your momentum stops and gravity is applied heavily, which then leads to the charge on the ground. This was quite easy to code, as I basically made a condition that if you press the charge button while in the air, gravity would just be multiplied. So yeah, air movement was quite easy to implement, as I was able to reuse a lot of the ground movement's code. So with that, let's jump right into... Refinement is super important for any project to go through. So far, we have a very satisfying cart controller that can drift on the ground and glide through the air seamlessly. So now it's time to chat about all of the smaller details that ultimately make the game more refined and fun to play. First up, Screen Shake. Screen Shake is something that is present in a ton of games, and with my Godot remake, I added it so it happens either when you boost, or if you bump into a wall. Speaking of which, wall bumping was something that I added at this point. Basically, if you bump into a wall, instead of losing all momentum immediately, you can bounce off of it with each sequential bounce moving you less and less back. Next up, I added another touch to charging up, being lighting. As you charge up, the cart begins to glow brighter and brighter, and upon releasing a charge, the light dims back. With the FOV change, camera shift, screen shake, and now lighting, charging up and drifting was way more fun already. After this, I went ahead and began some work on some basic particles. Initially, I crafted up some basic flame particles, but it didn't really fit, so after some tweaking, I went with these star particles instead. On top of this, while charging, the particles would shift to a different color and leave less of a trailing effect. And while turning, the particles would flow in the same direction as the cart. So, with the lighting and particles done, I next went on and added another essential game mechanic. In Kirby Air Ride, if you wiggle the joystick back and forth, you can do this neat little spin attack. So, to recreate this, I first made an array called Wiggle History. This is an array that would basically store your inputs, specifically being left and right. It records the direction you pushed being either one, alongside the exact time it happened. This array stores inputs for a very short time being Wiggle Window, which basically makes it so that you have to wiggle quickly to pull it off. Then, if Wiggle History has more than three wiggles within that short window, it means you wiggled fast enough, and it would trigger a spin for a short period of time. On top of this, if you are spinning and you bump into a wall, you bounce off way more, kind of like a pinball. Next up, I added another inch-sized detail, being inching forward. Basically, in the original game, while at full charge, you can inch forward slightly to adjust your positioning. This was another super simple change to add, as I was basically able to check to see if you were fully charged and pushing the forward direction. If so, you'd move slightly forward. With all these little gameplay additions added, it's time we jump into the final category for this being... So while this isn't a full game and more so a demo for me to learn Godot, I still want the game to be more than Cheese Wind Glide. So I decided it was time to replace the models with proper ones. So I rewatched the new Kirby Air Riders trailer and decided I'd try to replicate the new Warp Star in Blender, which was quite easy to do as it's just a star with some fancier turbojet things. Then I was able to simply drag and drop the model into Godot, and already it was looking way cooler. The fact that every tilt animation was made with code made it super easy to add, plus if I really wanted to, I could literally add any model in here and it would work. Speaking of, this game can't just be Kirby Air Ride with no Kirby, but instead, since this is in Godot, I did some searching and found a way more fitting character. Say hello to this little plushy creature. I found him on GitHub, and I thought he would be the perfect stand-in for Kirby. He's round, small, and looks very cute. So within Blender, I was able to make a couple different poses and animations. One for him sitting normally, one for him leaning, which would be used for turning, one for him gliding, and a couple transition animations between each one. Then over in Godot, I was able to import everything swiftly, where I was able then to basically insert the animations into my pre-existing code, and with a character on the cart, everything was really starting to come together here. In terms of charging up, I made it so that the Godot plush squished when doing so, making him feel way more bouncy. And I made sure that when transitioning between gliding and being grounded, those animations would also be emphasized. I also made spinning much more funny looking by making him squish here too, 
Just look at him go and bounce between everything. So with all of that, we have a pretty sick recreation of Kirby Air Ride's mechanics built from the ground up in Godot. As mentioned before, the goal for this wasn't to be a full remake of the game, and more so to be a tech demo for me to learn more about Godot as a whole. I've had a ton of fun working on this, and I'd say one of the best ways anyone can learn game development is trying to recreate some of their favorite games in any engine or tool. For the next while, I'm going to continue learning more about Godot, and if there's anything you would like to see me attempt to create, let me know in the comments. That's all for now, see you in the next one!